Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to show you how to create your own scan body that you can print and we're gonna use and export all of the parts that are already available to you in ExoCAD. This video is more for advanced users, but if you pay close attention and follow along until the end of the video, you will be also capable to create your own scan body in ExoCAD. I'm using a random case here with a DES desktop scan body and a DES Nova Bioquare Active RP tie base, but you can use any system that you want to do. The first step is to level out the bottom of design with the scan body itself. So if we output, if we export the scene, you can see only certain parts are getting output and the tie base is not inside the scan body that we export. So what we need to do is we need to find a way how to export the tie base by itself. Therefore, if we try to export it, we will get an error message because this is an encrypted tie base from this. We're gonna go to load, tools model, and we're gonna find the tie base that we're actually using here. If you go to the desk website, you can find the order number actually, and you can highlight it and go into the desk library and find it. In this case, it's an ORM tie base. I'm gonna edit it and select all, click cut and okay. After that, I'm gonna bring in the library tie base again and align both tie bases against each other. This is a very simple process and when we align those, it should be completely blue because it's identical files. Now let's see what's gonna happen if we bring in the rest of the files and we're gonna export it as one file. As you can see, we're gonna have a hollow mesh that's not what we want because we cannot really print it. To bypass it, we need to export our screw channel. We're gonna export it as a regular STL file. Then we're gonna import it again under add and remove mesh. We're gonna select only the screw channel, right click on it, edit mesh, select all and close the holes. Now we're gonna export it again as a regular STL. In order to create our custom scan body, we need to export all three files separately. That means the scan body file we need to export as an STL. We need to export the bottom of the designs separately as an STL file. And we need to export the actual tie base as a separate STL file that we can later on import in Mesh Mixer. The last step that we need to do is re-import the scan body STL and go through the same process what we did with the screw channel. That means right click on it, click on edit mesh, select all and close all the holes so it becomes a solid STL where we can later on use the screw channel STL to cut a hole through the scan flag to create a screw access hole. Now we're going to import all the files into Mesh Mixer. Another thing that we need to import is the original scan body scan from the desk library. Now I'm highlighting all my created parts so I can move them and align them to the original desk scan body that's in a different coding system. So I'm going to move it really close to the original desk scan body scan. It doesn't have to connect with them perfect. Then I'm going to click on the desk scan body, click on the magnet, click on my scan body scan that I want to align. And then I'm going to highlight, maybe take a little bigger brush and mark all the similar areas. Once everything is highlighted, I'm going to click align to target and it should align my created parts really perfectly to the same current system as the original desk scan body. We need this because our reference points are located in the original current system. Now I'm gonna start with some cleanup of the different parts. The first thing I'm gonna clean up is the bottom of the design. I don't really need the top part, all I need is the bottom part, so I'm gonna use a plain cut tool to cut the top part completely off. Then you can see it's actually an inverted file. 
So I highlighted with the select tool and under edit I'm going to click flip to normals. The actual scan flag is a little bit too long so I'm going to use the plane cut tool to cut it down. At the bottom I'm going to line it up exactly with the bottom of the designs where the intersection is. Click OK. So it's flush there. Then I'm going to select my screw channel SDL and make a quick copy of the screw channel because I'm going to need it later on in another step. Then I'm going to highlight the screw channel and click on T to get to the transform tool and click on the green line to make it a little bit longer. One important step is to remesh the scan flag. Therefore, I'm going to select it by double clicking on it and clicking on remesh. I'm going to select linear from the remesh mode. The remesh mode is really important because we want to avoid errors when we cut a hole through the scan flag with the screw channel SDL. Now we're going to select the SDL and the screw channel and select Boolean difference from the menu. We're going to cut a perfectly straight hole and accept the modification. For the most part, the cleanup of the individual parts is done now. We have to select them now and combine them to one piece. After that, we can export them to one STL and I'm going to call it Final Scan Body. I'm going to separate the parts because I want to continue with my modification. I'm going to make a quick copy of the scan flag file. That way I can reuse it later on when I made the modification on the other files. I'm going to use a plane cut first and I'm going to cut a straight 90 degree plane on one of the sides because I want to get a nice plane on one of the sides. Therefore I'm going to move the plane cut and avoiding going into the screw channel. When I like the modification, I'm going to accept the plane cut and I'm going to select the copy of the scan flag. I can again use the plane cut tool under edit and I'm going to cut another plane, but this time in a perpendicular method to fill it the void that I created on the bottom of the design. You can modify your scan flag in any manner that you want to do. When I create the perpendicular plane here, I'm going to make sure I'm done cutting into the head of the actual tie base because it will clear, that will create kind of an intersection. There. When I'm done with the perpendicular cut, I'm going to accept the modification and I can bring in the original scan flag scan again. And this is my modification so far. I'm going to bring in the first one again. I'm going to go to the plane cut tool again. This time I want to cut off the head of the scan body and I can cut it off in two separate ways. I can cut it off right at the top or I can leave the top part there. I can also leave a little bit of the ball head left over or I can add a different ball head if I want to. In this case I'm going to leave the little transition line there. I'm going to highlight all the files, click on combine and then on export to export the actual SDL file so I can print it in a printer. And I want to stress out at this point that this is an experimental workflow so don't listen to a random guy on the internet and only use files and scan bodies that are approved by an actual implant manufacturer. If you like the video, subscribe, go to my Patreon shot. Until then, see you then.